In September 2019, four chefs from Australia's National Indigenous Culinary Institute were invited to Ireland to headline a Taste of West Cork Food Festival and host a range of events in Dublin with the Australian Embassy. Myself and four other boys got invited over to Ireland to showcase Indigenous foods and hopefully give the people in West Cork, Dublin, Ireland and all over a taste of what it's like to be in Australia. Our NICI trip to Ireland came about through two of our board members, toured Ireland with Alan Joyce, Qantas CEO, and they came up the idea once they met Richard Andrews how to represent Australian cuisine at these events. They suggested who better to represent Australian cuisine than Indigenous people. So from that, a conversation and an idea turned into our 14-day program here in West Cork, but also in Dublin. For me personally, it's like we've made it. For all this planning, we're actually here and we're doing it now. So our guys know that, okay, we're really here and we're representing not only Australian cuisine, the Australian culinary industry, but we're representing our people here on a world stage. West Cork didn't just choose a country to twin with, we chose a continent, thanks to the ambassador. Well, he chose us and we chose him. So now we're going forwards with a really incredible 2019 program, which kind of as its central theme is for visiting Indigenous Australian chefs and Michael Ingray, who is the head of the Indigenous Culinary Institute. And of course, we have the Australian ambassador playing a key role in a lot of the events. There's a huge connection between West Cork and, and Australia itself with so many people from West Cork having migrated to Australia over the years. Also, they share you know, so many of the values that we in Australia have around our food production to create a vibrant food and tourism culture here. It's so much like Australia, we think we've got a lot to offer each other in terms of developing this kind of culture. We've had under our noses for all these years this fantastic treasure which is the Australian indigenous ingredients and the know-how of, of, of our indigenous people. Things like the finger limes which give you the zing from the citrus or the lemon myrtle leaves or, or wattle seeds or any number of the, the ingredients that we've brought here to Ireland to be used on this trip uh, which, which give it a flavour that's quite unique. That's the, you know, the value add, the X factor if you like, that we can add from Australia to Irish cuisine. With the increase of native products being used in not only restaurants across Australia but fine dining restaurants, it's our responsibility as Indigenous chefs to take care of that as well and try to produce that in a culturally appropriate way that also tells a story, not only their personal stories, but stories of their community and region and of Indigenous people across Australia. So we're going to enjoy spectacular Australian food cooked by Luke and Samuel Burke and their assistants Josh and David. They're working here tonight now, taking their produce from the garden here in Inishbeg in this beautiful place. And we're about to go to dinner, enjoying a lot of wonderful Australian wines, married with lots of other interesting Australian delights. So we're thrilled to have them here. Panna cotta, which we made with Illawarra plum, which is a native plum to Australia. And then on top we've got a native soup, just a bit of pomegranate, a bit of dehydrated strawberries, and then yeah, and a little bit of finger lime hidden on top. This has been a, a fantastic success and it's a real pleasure. They've, they've sourced some of the stuff in our gardens here and they bought some, some food uh, with them from Australia acquired some from local artisan food producers in West Cork to make this sort of fusion of West Cork and Australia. We're going to have kangaroo burgers in the church restaurant, so it's going to be a real kind of bush tucker burger night in the church. We've just got some local kangaroo from Australia from New South Wales, which we've brought over. 
we've minced it up and we've got your quality grass-fed beef and we've Watches, yeah. mixed it together. So 70% kangaroo, 30% your beef just to mix it out. Our number one product that we've bought over is Kangaroo. It has been underrepresented for, for many years, um, not only in Australia but around the world. I was a bit nervous of actually tasting Kangaroo. Never tried it before. Uh, really enjoyed it. It was really, really tasty. The burger was amazing, cooked really well, and it was absolutely lovely, highly recommendable. The whole meal was absolutely fabulous. I think people have been blown away by the ingredients, actually. I think, you know, they, they've brought unexpected flavours, new flavours, the native burgers, the wonderfully piquant chutney with the kakadu plums and, and, and other ingredients. You know, I, I had so many people saying to me after, after that event that that was definitely the best burger they'd ever had. It seemed to be a unanimous reaction. We have this connection with Australia, which is also synonymous for good food and good wine. Um, and, and so we're delighted to be linking with Australia, doing all that stuff here in Skibbereen. It's amazing. It's been fantastic to partner some of these beautiful Irish and Australian foods with some truly exquisite Australian wine. Australian winemakers are known as the new world producers. And if you have a look at some of the menus and the wines that are on our stock, they're innovative, they're bright, they're fresh. They partner exceptionally well with fantastic Irish seafood all the way through to what we've been doing with our native burgers, which is Irish beef and Australian kangaroo. We're hoping that by displaying the breadth and beauty of our Australian wines, there'll be more people in Ireland who want to put them on their wine glass and on their plates. We tasted some beautiful wines, we had some beautiful food, and the atmosphere was amazing, and that's what this food festival is all about. I think the quality of food will be shown, especially what we can produce, but not only what we can produce as Australian chefs, but also what we can learn from international chefs, especially island-based chefs. It's, uh, it's, it's great to get some foreign chefs uh, all the way from Australia. Great guys, they bring some energy, something different as well. And two of the guys will be cooking with me tomorrow on my site which is I'm doing a, a pop-up part of the West Coast Food Festival. As an up-and-coming chef coming over to Ireland and working with Ahmed, the Michelin star chef, to all the other beautiful venues here, we have learned lots, asked, we've asked lots of questions, it's very curious, and pretty much try to get as much knowledge as we can off them. With different cultures around the world, food obviously bridges a lot of cultures and a lot of conversations are, are around food and that's what we're finding here um, with our time in Ireland. They really love fresh produce. That's at the core of Irish people, I think. There's a great connection from the producer to the chef and there's not much time between making the product to come into the restaurant. There's a wonderful hub of creativity in West Cork. From the 70s on, you've had an amazing group of producers who kind of made home here. And it's inspired me and many other people to kind of have the outlet and have these customers and have these producers and restaurants and everything kind of merged together. So Taste of West Cork shows the world what we're doing down here. Uh, Taste of West Cork is blown us away in the type of food they have, the people, the range of things you can do from going fishing and foraging. They've really put it on here in West Cork. It was really nice. We've got lots of beautiful uh, mackerel, paddock, cod, uh, some lobsters, crab, crayfish. The place we're going to cook is Glip Garden. It's a run uh, by a beautiful family in a garden and we're going to collect some beautiful uh, vegetables from the farm and we're just going to do a nice, delicious uh, feast. The whole day was very jam-packed, so happy to go along with it and get out there and fish. It was amazing to get on the water, see the landscape, see what kind of fish they have around here, then going back, getting to break it all down. 
getting to cook it for people that came along with us was really amazing. The way West Cork sourced their produce, it's very sustainable, which everyone wants to do in the world. And cooking this way, it just makes the food more uh, like sing to you. It's a great produce region. We've seen that from a chef's point of view. And I'd encourage anyone, not only from Australia, but the world to actually visit the West Cork region in Ireland. If you love food, this is the place to be. People in West Cork have beautiful hospitality. The landscape and stuff around here is very beautiful. And it's not busy like a city, so I think heading to Dublin will change that a little bit. But seeing another part of Ireland is pretty exciting. Going to Dublin, it's going to be a bit more rammed up, a few more customers, a busy city, so hopefully we can feed them all, which will be easy for us boys. We're in uh, one of the oldest houses in this part of Dublin, Ivy House. It was built almost 300 years ago. And this evening we're in the music room and our guests are in the old dining room. So we're in rooms that were built for hospitality. Normally, here in Ivy House, we would be providing the entertainment and we would be providing the hospitality. What's unique about this evening is that we've flipped that to some extent and our guests are hosting us and providing both food and musical entertainment for us. So that's, a, that's an exceptional gesture and a very much valued, I think. Food is so intimate a part of our own culture and our own place that it is what we most want to share when we want to tell something about ourselves. Tonight's event at Ivy House, co-hosted with the Secretary General of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade here was really directed at the issues of diversity, inclusion and also some of the people who, who drive the, the partnership between Australia and Ireland and I think that was a, a really good outcome of tonight's event was to promote that sort of discussion. I experienced a lot of firsts here tonight in Ivy House. I uh, took apart from the great night that it was, or meeting so many great people, Nicola, the ambassador, and a number of other great people. But there's a lot of firsts for me now. I had never tasted kangaroo before, never tasted wallaby. And I wouldn't be the most adventurous of food eaters now, but it was good, yeah. I think it, the fact that it was a little bit exotic, uh, so a bit different for, from all of us. Uh, there was this amazing bread called damper that I really, really enjoyed. And then we ate some wallaby meat as well, which it, I discovered afterwards. Actually grew up here in Dublin, in, in an island off Dublin. But who knew we had wallabies? I didn't, certainly. And wonderful wines. So the whole thing was just quite amazing. Well, we're here in University College Dublin this evening with uh, President Deeks at the invitation of Ambassador Andrews and his lovely wife. This occasion here this evening uses indigenous foods to their most wholesome and most fulsome expression. It's a great opportunity and a privilege to be here. I hope that the Irish guests will gain an appreciation for how ancient the Australian indigenous culture is, so dating back some 50,000 years or more. It's a far longer period of time than humans have been in Ireland. And still the food which comes from that culture is something which we can all appreciate today. So I hope that the, the Irish guests will get uh, a much uh, deeper appreciation of how ancient the Australian culture is, the Australian indigenous culture, and how valuable it is. We have some Hiroshima kingfish. We've just put some uh, vinaigrette on it, some kakadu plum and rock salt and a bit of chive. And we have an oyster with another vinaigrette that we've just put some finger lime caviar on. 
and we have a seared scallop with uh, chili and lemon vinaigrette and the scallop's been seared in uh, lemon myrtle. To me, the kangaroo was absolutely fantastic. It was succulent, it was tender, and it was flavoured with great Australian indigenous ingredients. It was fantastic. We're supporting this initiative because it involves food, particularly food from an indigenous perspective. And we thought, what a great link. Australia, Ireland, focused on the story of indigenous people and that food heritage and we wanted to be part of it. Could I ask our chefs to come out and uh, receive the, um, uh, the appreciation? But by the time they finish tomorrow night, they will have done, I think, 13 events here in Ireland in 10 days, which I think uh, could be described as a marathon rather than a sprint, but uh, uh, they, they've been up for it, they've been great, everyone's loved them wherever they've gone. I could just ask you guys to come along, please. It is the first time that, that a group of Indigenous chefs have showcased Australian cuisine on a world stage. So I think it's, if it isn't now, in the future they'll look back at it and think it was a remarkable thing that we, we have done here. We'll remember this trip for a lifetime. Share it with the people back home. Thank you.